Good evening, you guys. Come on into my Facebook. We're going to talk about a post I made earlier today. This is impromptu. This is this is like living room talk. This is living room talk tonight. Come on in. Please share this video. We're going to talk about something that I'm just going to be casual. I'm going to talk to you guys about what I feel. Hey, Ilea Hagen. Hey, uh, you guys are jumping on. I hope you can hear me well. And uh, got a lot of response on my post today where I said that pastors are not telling people the truth. And uh, thank you so much. You guys are jumping on. I'm watching some of you guys. Please come on in. We're going to have a heart to heart today. We're going to have a talk about what is real. Let's be real. <laughs> okay. Hey, Greg. So great to talk to you. And I know you guys are jumping on and some of you guys, I don't know how to pronounce your name. So we're going to talk about some things I think are just extremely important in today's moment in history. We are living in a very serious time. So I'm just going to talk from the cuff. I'm going to talk from my heart. I always tell you guys, hey, Gina, I always tell you guys I'm not a theologian. I am not uh, a pastor. I, am, uh, I don't believe in female pastors anyway. So I believe in evangelists. I believe in teachers. I, I believe in those kind of things. But I'm just going to talk from the heart because... This is what I feel. I've been a Christian for a long time. And uh, let me just put a disclaimer. There are pastors that are speaking the truth far and few in between. It's like looking for, hey, Vita. It's, hey, uh, Martins. Hey, you got, so happy to see you guys on. There are, it's like a needle in a haystack. It's like looking for a spouse. <laughs> So there are pastors, and again, I'm just talking from the cuff. I'm just, hey, Dave, hey, from uh, Georgia, you guys come on from all over the world, and I'm going to talk what God puts on my heart. Hey, Ralph, I see you guys jumping on. I see you're all jumping on. Please share this video. We're going to talk. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, Gigi, uh, I do believe in pastors. Absolutely. I do believe, I just don't believe in oh, female pastors uh, running churches. I just, that's just my personal opinion of what the Bible says. I'm not saying that I know the Bible. Absolutely. But I do believe, hey, Diane, I do believe that um, men should be the leaders. And um, so anyway, <laughs> so Eve was deceived first and then Adam. So, <laughs> hey, Norman. So anyway, let's talk. You guys are jumping on. Nice to see some of you guys on. I'm seeing some of you guys on. I haven't seen in a while. Oh my gosh, I'm, I forgot to turn the fan on. Where's my fan? Excuse me, I gotta, I gotta put, I gotta put the fan on. Just give me one second, you guys. I'm putting the, I gotta put this fan on. Oh Lord. Okay, I got it on now. Oh, I'm happy now. <laughs> I had to put, it's just hot in here. So I need some circulation. Because you guys know I get worked up about certain topics. Okay? So, anyway, what I want to talk to you guys about are pastors are not speaking the truth. Hey, Fran, thank you so much. Pastors, hey, Troy. They, oh, hey, thanks, Vita. Yeah, it's just a summer dress. It's just. Cash, cashy. I'm cashy today. So, glammy cash. Glammy cash. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, let's talk. Let's talk. Lots on my heart today. And I want to talk about pastors who are not speaking the truth. You know what really hurts me? We're living in the end times. This is it. This is it, you guys. We're living in the end times. 
Jesus said it's going to get worse and worse. He said it's not going to get better. I don't want to lead you astray. I don't want to speak something that's not true. I don't want to tickle your ears. I don't want to make you feel good. I want to tell you the truth so you're ready. Because we're living in a dangerous time. You're hearing people say it's going to get better. Everything's going to go great. The economy is going to get better. Things are going to get better. Everything's going to get better. Okay. Jesus said that seducers will become worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived themselves. Jesus said that you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars and commotions. And you know, when you go to church right now, when you go to your church, most of your pastors, they're talking about something completely irrelevant to this time right now. The trumpet's getting ready to sound. We're living, we don't know the hour or the day, but we know the season. So you guys are going to these churches and the pastor is basically just talking about encouragement. Listen, I want to encourage you to be ready. Because let me tell you something, there are people that are suicidal out there. They're on drugs. They're looking, they're in moral sin. They're looking on, at porn every day on their computers. They're hopeless. They're sleeping around. They're dead in their spirit. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power that could change them. They are literally suffering in the as slaves of the devil. Please share this video. There is a great falling away from the faith. Jesus talks about, no, not a revival, but revival could happen individually or in maybe pockets around the world. But as a whole, Jesus said there'll be a great falling away from the faith in Thessalonians before the son of perdition is revealed, which is the Antichrist, Satan himself entering into a man. You go to churches, I'm going to tell you something, these pastors, the majority of pastors are hirelings they're hired okay they don't care about the life of the sheep how many pastors are caring about the sufferings of people right now all they're doing is talking about opening their churches all the, listen I got I got radically filled with the Holy Spirit in the church I believe in a gathering of the Saints I got baptized in water in a church I mean, God moved upon me mightily in a church. But you know what's happening with church now? It's a club. It's a social gathering. People don't talk to each other. You got masks on. You, you go in. There's only a certain amount of capacity. Some of you, I don't, listen, I'm, be, can I be real? Are you guys going to let me be real? Are you going to let me be real? Are you going to play the church thing on me? Are you going to play the church thing on me? Come on. The church is in a sickened condition. Like the church of Laodicea. The church of Thyatira. The church that tolerated Jezebel and the false doctrine. That's what we're living in. The Laodicean church. The dead church. That needs that fallow ground broken up. The church that lost its first love. Most people that are alive today have forsaken even the great commission of God to go out there and preach the gospel. Pastors are no longer doing that. The Christians are no longer doing that. Okay? Who's out there preaching the gospel, telling people repent for the kingdom of God is at hand? How many people are out there? Are you guys out there? Listen, you have a ministry. It's not just the pastor's fault, but it's your fault too. You have a ministry. You, we have got to go out there and preach the gospel. That's the great commission he gave to you and to me. Okay? I'm reading. I got to take a sip. Sorry, I got to take a sip. A lot of dead Christians out there. I'm trying to wake you up shake you and wake you up everybody's concerned about how to make money online how do we get you for a virtual experience of our 
concert online? How do we get you on a virtual experience of our plays online or our service? Pay $20, pay $15, pay $10. Let's get you online and get your money. They don't care about your soul. Are you even concerned about your family's soul? You know, I remember talking to an individual once. Mul really, it's multiple times. It's like every day. <laughs> it's not just once. Who am I kidding? I asked them, is your family saved? And they say, I don't know. Honestly, I haven't thought about it. If you haven't thought about if your family's saved, you're not saved. <laughs> you are not saved. If you haven't thought, I'm being real, you guys. If you haven't thought, if your family's saved, you're not saved. Because when you get saved, all you think about is how God delivered you from the powers of darkness, according to Ephesians delivered you from the powers of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. This is a hard message, you guys, because most people are not going to heaven. Most pastors are not going to heaven. Do you know that? Do you know most pastors are not going to go when the trumpet sounds? Because they don't even care if a person is saved or not. They coddle people. They don't even tell them the trumpet's about to sound. The rapture is about to happen. We are at the end. These are the signs of the times. Everything that's happening with the economy, with the virus, with the Middle East, uh, with the currency, with everything happening, the wars and rumors of wars. and I mean, everything is there. The season is here. And they're not telling you that Jesus is coming. So you go to a church service and all they're talking about is something. <laughs> That's all they're doing. They're not warning you. You don't even know what the manifestation of the presence of God is. You don't even know what it means to encounter Jesus and have a transformation. Supernaturally. Did you know that God is a supernatural God? Did you know that until you have that encounter with Jesus, did you know that until you have that encounter, you will not be changed? It'll just be a religion? Did you know you have to have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus to change your life? Did you know that most people don't have an encounter with Jesus? So when I talk about something, they think I'm far out in left field. They think that, wow, She's like, she is like too much. Do you know that I'm not enough? Do you know that God wants more and more and more? I'd rather you be hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. Is the pastor telling you that? Or is the pastor concerned? The pastors are only concerned about how many people are going to show up at their church. Idolatry of the church building. That's what they're concerned about. Everything's about the building right now, except it's not about souls. How long can we keep these buildings when the economy is going downhill? Troy says, please pray for my brother. Listen, people are dying out there. Pastors, wake up. You're cowards. You're asleep in the light. You're sleeping. You're dead. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you life. Forget about your tithes and offerings. Forget about it. Forget about how you're going to keep your church building. Let it go. Be concerned about the souls of men. People are one heartbeat away from eternity. I had a pastor jump on here saying, Oh, I can't, I, I'm so down on pastors and so judgmental. I went on his Facebook and all he's got is selfies. Every other pic, really, every picture of himself was selfies. Selfies. A pastor saying that I'm I'm critical. <laughs> not one scripture on his Facebook. Not one. <laughs> I'm not a pastor. Pastors are held to a higher regard. Okay. Listen. I don't care if you post a picture of yourself. I don't care. 
But if you got every picture and every post as a selfie, and you're or you're vacationing, and you're not even talking about Jesus, and you're talking about what you did all summer, where's your heart? Where? How do you not care that people are drug addicts out there? People are drunkards out there. People are sleeping around in your church during the pandemic. They're yoking up and having sex, ungodliness, sexual sexuality in the church. Like Paul talked to the Corinthian church. How do you not care that people are going to hell? Most of them in your church are going to hell. They have no fear of God. In fact, when you hang around them, they don't even talk about Jesus. You'll never hear them talk about Jesus. They'll talk about what they did in church or what events coming up, but they don't talk about Jesus and, and how Jesus is real in a personal relationship with him. Listen, this is real talk. People are going to hell. We are responsible as a church. You know why our country is in the condition that it's in? Because the church is burying their head in the sand. They are fear, fearful. They don't want to talk about Jesus. They don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to stir the pot. They don't want to say nothing. They don't want to offend anybody in their church that's living in sin. And they're going to let them go to hell. The, Ezekiel talks about God's going to hold their blood on our hands if we don't warn people. Whether they're the righteous or the wicked. God says, I will require their blood on your hand. You're so afraid. You want to be liked by everybody. Everybody. You're a people pleaser. Paul said, if I please people, I cannot please God. You're a people pleaser. And you can't stand people like me. Because you're going to hell in a handbasket. You can't stand people like me calling you out. Holding you accountable for your behavior. You don't want to be held accountable. Nobody wants to be held accountable. You want to be able to say what you want to say, do what you do, hang out with whoever you want to hang out with, see whatever movies you want to see, date whoever you want, marry whoever you want. Don't warn people. That you, you don't want to be held accountable for anything. You just want to do what you want. You want your freedom. And lo and behold, a woman should come up to you and say, or a man or anyone, Hey, Pastor, how come you're not warning people about the end times? Hey, Pastor, why are you getting involved with ungod with false teachers? Pastor, why are you yoking up with the false groups? Pastor, why are you not telling us about the end times? Pastor, why are you not sounding the alarm as a watchman on the wall? Pastor, what... Or Christians, brothers and sisters, you even try to hold them accountable and you better watch out. They're going to run from you. They're going to run. They don't want nothing to do with you because they don't want to hear it. Listen, y'all, we are in the end times. This is it. This is Ichabod. The glory of the Lord has departed. Listen, when God comes into the picture, the real God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he comes into the picture and he literally, he's got a manifested presence that he presents himself with. He gives you revelation of the scriptures, the revealed word of God, the rhema word of God, revelation. The pages of the Bible come to life. When you open that Bible, it's the living word. The living word comes and changes you. And when you pray and you repent and you cry out to God, His Spirit fills the room. It's a manifested, manifested presence of the glory of God. That's what He talks about. He said, he said, he said, if any man keep my commandments, I and the Father will come and manifest ourselves to him. Listen, Jesus is real. He's the living word. He's alive. He's not dead. He's the living word, he's got a real presence about him that the church no longer experiences nor talks about. When you have an encounter with God, you don't do what you used to do. You have a transformation. You have that moment where God enters your atmosphere. The Holy Spirit comes, enters your at atmosphere, convicts you of sin, brings you to repentance. 
You no longer want to live like the world or do what the world does. You no longer want to hang with the world or the worldly people. You no longer act like the world. You no longer cuss. You no longer, you no longer put junk on your Facebook cussing any of those cuss words. You no longer want to watch violent movies, Harry Potter, paranormal, pastors. You no longer want to go to Disneyland and go see Harry Potter and his whole thing because he's a wizard teaching wizardry. Pastors, you no longer want to practice Halloween or endorse your church to practice Halloween or anything like it because it's witchcraft. You no longer cause others to stumble in your church. Friendship with the world is being an enemy of God, you no longer want to do these things. It, you're done. That's it. You know, you're holy. You live holy. You repent. You teach people to repent. But we're living in an hour where there is nothing like this. It's very rare to talk about repentance, to say, stop your sins. You coddle people. Pastors, you're coddling people. You're telling them it's okay to go work at the bar and, and serve alcohol. You're just a bartender. It's okay. No, it's not okay. It's okay. You don't, don't worry. Don't be so hard. Don't be so religious. It's not the religious thing you see. Because if you love Jesus, you're going you're gonna to be convicted if you have the Holy Spirit. And the fact that you're not convicted tells me you don't have the Holy Spirit. Or maybe you did, but you're totally backslidden and you're hardened and you're you're turning against God and you don't even know. Self-deception is very powerful. How can we as a church use our freedom to sin? Be at liberty in sinning and compromising our walk with God. How is that happen? People are Satan is killing people out there. You understand? Satan. More than 150 to 55,000 people die a day. You don't even care about Christians. Do you care if your family is saved? You ever think about, man, my mother, my father, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, children, they're not saved. Does it? Does it? Anywhere in here? Anywhere in, your, in here? Does it? concern you because most of you it doesn't concern because I know I talk to people on a daily basis and they don't care about God I mean it's to our shame that they have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ because you're so concerned about rocking the boat you're so concerned that you're gonna lose your parents or your mother or your father or your children or your aunts and uncles and family and you don't realize that Jesus said that you must hate, hate, not like hate, like loathe them, but you must love him more than anyone. You must hate your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your aunts, uncles, your own life. Take up your cross or else you cannot be his disciple. See, Jesus has to come first. And if you don't have a desire to tell people about Jesus, then your love walk has grown cold. And this is not a popular message. This is a real message. I'm trying to get you ready for the trumpet. The trumpet's going to sound. Hey, Diane says, I'm praying for my unsafe family every day. Me too. I pray for my entire family for salvation every day. Because you know what, Diane? A lot of people think they're saved. And it's a false conversion. It's a different Jesus. And that's what I see in my own family. It's a different Jesus. It's a different gospel. You see, you can't do whatever you want. You can't live how you want. You can't. Because what happens is when you live how you want, it's it's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a different Jesus. It's a made-up Jesus. And that's what most of these pastors have. It's a made-up Jesus. Like, you can't serve the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You can't have holy yoga at your church. You can't. They're dead. These churches are dead. It's Ichabod. The glory of the Lord is gone. They don't. That's why the church is powerless. And we, we're trying to keep our buildings during this pandemic. We're trying to keep 25% capacity. Or have, why don't we just have everybody come in and get the virus? 
It's all about the building. Where two or more are gathered, I'm there in the midst of them. God is changing the times and the seasons. God is shifting everything. He's doing a great shaking. And people are not listening. And there's a great falling away in the end times. Departing from the faith to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Including pastors. And they're not listening. And that's what's on my heart today. How? There's a real encounter, you guys, with Jesus Christ that you can have. You don't have to be religious anymore. You don't. Yeah, Diane says we're gathered now. Yep, Greg said holy yoga. Absolutely. Listen, y'all. Jesus is coming. Things are going to get worse. We are at the very doors of the rapture of the church. The church is sleeping and they're dead. Dead as a doorknob. Dead. I got a doorknob. Dead as a doorknob over here. I mean... They're dead. And, and guess what's going to happen? Jesus is going to come and you're going to get left behind. Because you're not on fire for God. You're going to get left behind. You're going to be the five foolish virgins that didn't have their lamp burning with oil. You're going to be like, Pastor, why didn't you tell me? A lot of pastors are going to be left behind right now. Because you're not hearing. They're not telling you and trump, sounding the trumpet and sounding the alarm as watchmen on the wall. They're not telling you, hey, get ready. These are the signs. Jesus is coming. Look up. Jesus, so when you see all these things, look up. Because your redemption is drawing near. He said he's coming for a church that's looking for him. He said, look up. And he says, pray always that you're accounted worthy to, stand to escape the wrath that is coming upon this world and to stand before the Son of Man. Stop thinking about how much you want to go back to church and hear a watered-down dead message. Start getting into your word right now. Don't depend on your pastors that are not speaking the truth. Get into your word right now. Open that Bible. First pray. Go into your prayer closet. Pray. And the times of refreshing will come from the Lord. Repent. Repent of your comp. Listen. Listen. God's presence comes on those that repent. His Spirit fills you. You need the filling of the Holy Ghost. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need the power of God. He said, wait, tarry here in Jerusalem. The 120 of his disciples were sitting there waiting in the upper room. Waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. He says, wait until you be endued with power from on high. That you can be witnesses to me in Judea, Samaria, and, and all the uttermost parts of the earth. He wants us to go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone. And he wants men everywhere to repent. Because he's coming like a thief in the night. He's going to come in an hour that you're not aware of. And the signs are here, you guys. The virus is just a precursor to the shaking of the nations. The nations are being shaken economically. It's going to hit everybody economically. It's not just the United States. It's everybody. Everybody. It's a shaking. People are starving to death. People have no money, no jobs all over the world. They're dying. I believe this virus is real. I don't believe it's going to go away after the election. It's real. Listen, stop watching the news. Stop watching the news. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He said there will be plagues, even if it's man-made. God allowed it to be man-made to bring judgment. Stop listening to the news and listen to the voice of God. Get quiet with the Lord. Stop listening to CNN, Fox, and all those news and your local news. Stop asking your friends, what do you think is happening? Stop listening. Stop listening even to a lot of your pastors, really. Because they're, they're like dumb dogs that cannot bark. God said it in Jeremiah. The pastors, the shepherds are like dumb dogs that aren't barking and warning you that Jesus is coming and judgment is right around the corner. 
if you are dead, if you are dead, yeah, John says, I believe this is biological warfare. China has made this weapon of warfare to control and to bring down nations. Okay, listen. I've already talked about we're going to lose our superpower. We are out of prophecy. America. We are killing unborn. We have human sex trafficking. We are one of the vilest nations. We Listen. Our military has more men raped in there than a normal anywhere. Military men are getting raped daily. And we're going to have a military that fights the enemy? They have allowed transgender in the military. One of my girlfriends told me yesterday who works on a military base that she saw a sergeant, a drill sergeant, walk into the bathroom with eyeliner on, makeup on, hair in a bun, military. And you think that our nation is going to protect ourselves against the enemy when we are the enemies of God. Come out from among her, children of God. Come out. Jesus is coming. This right here is not our home. Our home is in a kingdom which is not of this world. Jesus is coming back to take us home. Okay? Listen to me. We cannot put our trust in military, in presidents, in men. The Bible says, Cursed is the man who puts his trust in the arm of flesh. Cursed. Cursed. We cannot put our trust in anyone, not even pastors. We can't put our trust in anyone but God. God is the one that tells his people what's coming next. God is the one that's trying to tell you, wake up. The kingdom of God is at hand. Things aren't going back to normal. There's going to be a shaking like you've never seen before. In order for the Antichrist to come on the scene, there has the world has to be in total chaos. The world, we're not going back, you guys. It's not going back. The world has, they need a man to solve the problems of the nations. There's going to be a man that rises up from the European Union, the rebuilding of the Roman Empire. I talked to you guys about this. He's going to come from the European Union, the little horn. He's going to rise up the Antichrist. He is going to make a covenant with Israel. And that's when the tribulation starts. We are out of here. Okay? We are out of here, but we don't know how much God's going to allow us to go through. We have to be ready. He will come in an hour that we don't expect. And you could die dead on the spot right now in your sins. Listen. You could die right now in your sins. That illicit relationship all y'all are having. That ungodly, ungodly sexual relationship. Somebody's listening to me right now. I, I know it. You are, you are living in ungodly. You, you have an ungodly relationship with someone. Repent. Get rid of that person out of your life. Stop sleeping with them. Stop having sexual encounters with them. Stop it. If the, if the trumpet sounds, you're going to get left behind. Some of you guys are getting drunk at home, depressed. You're going to get left behind. Drunkards will not in inherit the kingdom of God. Listen. Some of you guys are looking at porn. Some of you guys are daily looking at porn or every three to four days and you're going to get left behind. Pastors, majority of you are looking at pornography and you're going to get left behind. You see, I'm not here to coddle you. I'm here to put the fear of God in you because God does not tolerate sin. He doesn't tolerate it. You will get left behind if you continue to defy a holy God. You have no fear of the Lord. That's why you continue to do your sins. You have no fear of God. This nation has no fear of God. The church has no fear of God. 
You continue to think about how much money you can make while you're in ministry. You have no fear of God. This is not the time. This time is the time to cry out and to tell the church Jesus is coming. And he's coming for a church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. And God is going to bring down the mega churches. He's going to bring down these ministries. Because that money that you're after is not going to be there. There's going to be a shaking. The shaking is already happening. You guys are sleeping. It's a sleeping giant. It's like the Trojan horse. It is in our territory. The army is in the Trojan horse. It is in our world. It is in our land. It is a sleeping giant. And every person that's in that Trojan horse is going to come out and you're going to caught, get caught unaware. Your job, your finances, the stock market, the housing market, uh, everything. Listen, don't you feel something's going to happen? Don't you see this? People are at home and on furlough and there's no jobs and, and people aren't going anywhere and they're afraid of the virus and the churches aren't open and the restaurants don't have capacity and and in the Gulf, there's all the, the warships are there from every nation, from the United States and China and Russia and the Middle East and, 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 and the, the head, of, head of all military or have been in their bunkers. I mean... Come on. I keep warning you guys. The pastors are not warning you. Stop listening to these dumb dogs that cannot bark. If you're going to listen to pastors, listen to some of them that are speaking and warning you. Listen, Jesus is coming. And they're out there. I post them on my Facebook. If they're, they're good pastors and they're preaching. Listen, not every one of us is 100% right. I'm not even 100% right. None of us. Let God be true and every man a liar. I don't care if it's the best pastor out there. None of us are 100% right. Not 100%. Not all of us know everything. But we know the times and the seasons. And we know that we have to warn people. Please listen. Wake up, church. This world is passing away with everything in it. Don't store up for your yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust does corrupt. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where... Thieves can't break in and steal, and the moth and the rust doesn't corrupt it. I mean, store for yourselves treasures in heaven, which are eternal. And get your mind on things above, because Jesus is coming, and we're going to come back riding on those white horses in the Battle of Armageddon. We're going to come back. We, we know something is in the air. We know by the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God, Again, I'll say it by the Spirit of God, and most don't have the Spirit, but by the Spirit of God, we know that He's warning His saints, His church, that He's coming. And there's going to be a great shaking, and we could be under we could be under a nuclear attack, an EMP attack. We don't know what's coming, but we know something's coming. And we know it's going to be a great shaking in the nations. They're talking about civil war whether it's a Democrat or a Republican, they're talking about civil war, they're talking Black Lives Matter, Antifa, groups that are angry, groups that are fighting each other, racism, rising up against racism, ethnos, nation, rising up against nation, earthquakes, pestilences, plagues. Listen, y'all, I'm trying to tell you the truth. Yes, John says, the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. And I, as a sister, I'm going to talk to you. In reality, stop doing the church thing. Quit being dead. You're, most of you are dead. You're alive, but you're dead. You're dead towards God, and you're religious, but you're dead. Be real with yourself. And John said, FEMA, absolutely. That's another video in itself. You're dead while you're living. You have no Jesus. You just exist every day. You do the religious thing. You turn on the preachers and and you and and you talk the religious talk when when you need it when you need to. You sing the religious songs. You do whatever, but you're dead. You're dead as a doorknob, and you don't you don't even know Jesus. Jesus, the scariest words he's gonna say is, "I never knew you. Depart from me." 
you that work iniquity. Depart from me. But you're going to say to him, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Cast out devils in your name? Did many wonderful works in your name? And he's going to say, I never knew you because you're dead as a doorknob. You pastors, dead as a doorknob. Pastors, that you allow people to be dead in their sins. It's just, I'm just disgusted. Disgusted at these end times that we live in. Disgusted. You don't even care that the drunk are dying, that the drug addicts are dying in the streets, that the poor don't have food to eat, that the widows are by themselves and the elderly. You don't even care. All you care about is your little vacations and how many can get in your church. Your church sermons are dead. They're dead. Ichabod, the glory of the Lord has departed. Don't even care that your family members are dead. That, that your neighbors are dead, that your congregants are dead. They're going to hell in a handbasket. You don't even care. You just want to preach a nice sermon in your failing churches in these pandemic times. Dead. Don't even care who's going to hell. Don't even care who's going to die in their sins. Don't even care to check on people. Don't even care. You're a hireling. Don't even care about the life of the sheep and you see the wolf coming and you see, and you scatter you run you don't even care and the Bible says you're gonna to have to give an account for every soul in your church you're gonna stand before God and give an account for every soul in your church and what you did with that person dead as a doorknob you let your children do whatever see whatever movie they want to see Hang out with whoever. Can't even discipline them. Dead as a doorknob. Don't even want to. You're dead spiritually, man. Wake up. Wake up. Jesus is coming. Get on fire for him. He said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. When will you care for the souls of men, pastors? Children of God. When will you care? When will you care that your family members are going to hell? And they're going to be tormented for an eternity. When does it bother you? It will bother you when you truly get saved. Because a lot of y'all are not saved. You can't even give an altar call. You can't even tell people, stop living together. You can't, you can't even tell people that sex outside of marriage is a sin. You can't even tell them that being drunk will keep you out of heaven. Drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. You can't even say nothing because you're so dead and you're people pleasers instead of God pleasers. You can't even warn people because you're cowards. And the Bible says the cowards will be cast into the lake of fire with the devil and his angels dead. Dead as a doorknob, you pastors out there. You can't even speak the truth, the word of the living God. And God has me. On here is a woman who doesn't even desire to speak this way to you. I just want to be nice and quiet and a simple woman, but God says, open your mouth and I'll fill it. He has me coming on here with my glam self, having to put on my makeup today, which I don't want to do. I want to be loved by everybody. I want to be liked by all you pastors. But God says, go. And I will open your mouth and I will fill it because people refuse to talk this way. You are ear tickling dead pastors. The only thing that's going to encourage people is you call them to repentance. That's the only way out of their sins and eternal life. They must repent. You must repent pastors. You must repent church. That's the only way you will get your life he that saves his life will lose it. But those that lose their life for my sake will save it. So God has a woman on here <laughs> that looks like me. That rather just go to Alta or Sephora. Just rather do makeup videos and fashion videos and sit there and speak to the church. Because you are afraid and you are dead. Dead in the church afraid of the people and you want to save your your idolatrous church 
from this pandemic and nobody can go there and all you do is talk about we're gonna open our churches why don't you talk about we're gonna save souls instead of preaching to the same old choir day after year after year you can't even go into the highways and the byways why don't you go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in why repent church God has a woman sitting here. You think I want to do this? Sit here and talk to all y'all? No. I do not. But God says, go and I'll fill your mouth. Repent, church. Jesus is coming. And I'll talk to you guys soon. And if there's anyone that I've offended, I'm glad. I'm glad. You need to be offended. You need to get mad enough to stop your wicked, lukewarm, compromising, cowardice Christianity. You need to come out of your closet like the gays are and start preaching to people the truth of the living God. Come out of your closets, Christians, and start preaching the truth of the great commission that he has commanded all of you to do, just like me, right now. If all you guys start preaching, we could get some people saved. Go, go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's you. Anyone under the sound of my voice, that's you. The great commission. Go. Go. Life is short. It's going to be gone. It's like you're going to be dead. It's inevitable. You're going to die. Go. Win souls for the kingdom. Go tell your mom and dad. Go tell your brothers and sisters. If they hate you, let them hate you. Shake the dust off your feet. Let them hate you. But at least share the gospel. At least tell them they're going to hell unless they repent. Tell them about their sins. Tell them they're separated from God. Tell them. Be bold. You're going to let them go to hell? You're going to let them die in their sins? Come on, tell them, even if they hate you, they're going to hate you. But you sowed the seed. You sowed the seed. Let them hate you. The whole, every nation's going to hate you. Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. They're going to put some of you to death, your own family members. Go. Stop listening to your awful, dead pastors that are trying to figure out what sermon they're going to preach twice a week. Stop. Seek the face of the living God. He said, if you seek me, you'll find me. If you search for me with all of your heart. That's what he said. He said, keep seeking, keep knocking, keep asking, and the door will be opened up unto you. Keep, keep. This is the spirit of the living God. This is spiritual. I pray all you guys have an encounter with Jesus, the Son of God. Because once you have an encounter, you'll never be the same. Never. And you'll never go back to the world. Your desires are going to change. Everything's going to change. You're going to love Him with all your heart. And you're going to do things that please Him. You're going to live a holy and godly life. And I pray for that before it's too late. And if you're not there and you got a false conversion, repent. Just say, Lord... I don't think I don't think it's a real Jesus I have in my life because I don't have that fire. I don't have that holiness and thought and word and action. Repent. Repent. Cry out to God. He loves you. He loves you. He said, if any man come unto me in no wise will I cast him out. Anybody, any of you, go. Go to him. He's waiting with open arms. Go. Say, Jesus, I want to. I want a life change. I want a transformation. I want a testimony like I that I encountered you in my life and my world has changed in my spirit. You gave me a new heart and a right spirit within me. You took out my stony heart and gave me a heart of flesh. I want to be transformed. I want to be holy. I want to be righteous. I want to be godly. I want to be the bride of Christ. He'll do it for you. But you got to repent and you got to acknowledge that you're lost. And you've made up a 
false Jesus in your mind, this false Jesus of this, this, this church that we have that hasn't even changed you, that hasn't even done anything for you but made you more prideful in information. You know, <laughs> knowledge puffs up. You got all this knowledge, but you have no transformation. You have no life-changing, altering moment with Jesus. If you want it, he's no respecter of persons. He'll give it to you. Please share this video. I'm done. And I pray that this blessed you because I really felt like the Lord wanted me to share this for, for people out there. Just be real. I want to be real. And I want to help you because it's miserable to be without the Lord. And it's miserable to have a fake relationship with the Lord that hasn't done anything for you. Up here, you may have some thoughts, but in here, nothing has happened. And you have no true love for the Lord, for Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus is real, and he's the living God, who is at the right hand of the Father, and all authority has been given, in, given to him of things in heaven and earth and under the earth. And may the Lord's anointing be on your life, and may his presence permeate your atmosphere in the room that you're in, wherever you're watching, may the convicting power of the Holy Spirit fall on you. And you, may you be changed and come to repentance of your sins to never be the same again. And may he change you from the inside out. And may you be born again of the Spirit of God from above. And not just head knowledge, but heart transformation. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the coming King. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. He is wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, and the Everlasting Father. He is the Great I Am. And you will never be the same. You will never be the same. He's a wonderful God. He loves you. And he wants to rescue you from Satan's power so that you no longer have to be a slave to Satan. He wants to give you that transformation. If you would just ask him, just say, Lord, I'm dead and I'm empty. And if you really see seek and look within yourself, you are dead and empty. Because you can't be alive with that encounter, without an encounter with Jesus. You can't. There's a false peace that Satan gives you but you know you're dead inside. And you know this Jesus I'm talking about, you haven't met him yet. I love you guys. I love you guys. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you. And may the Lord bless all of you that are under the sound of my voice. And may he change you. And may you know the resurrection, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. May you know that he is the living God, that he is real, and his presence is real. It's real, the manifested presence of God. He's real. He's real, you guys. He's not a fake. He's not a phony. He's the real living God. He's called the living word, the living God. I love you guys and I'll talk to you guys soon. Please share this video.